Hey guys, Leah here from Unbox and I'm in San Francisco for the launch of the Samsung Galaxy S10. Initially, we were all prepped to go to Barcelona because that's usually where they launch the S series, but it's different this year and it's bigger than what we expected. It is the 10th anniversary of the Galaxy series and the brand is going all out. So join me for this hands-on and quick review of the Samsung Galaxy S10. This time, Samsung is launching not two, but three variants of the S10 series. The S10e, which is the lightweight, more affordable model, the S10, and the S10 Plus. I'll cut to the chase and start with the most obvious thing. The phones have no notch. Instead, they're rocking what the company calls the Infinity O display, aka the punch hole. The S10 and S10e have a single camera module, so the hole is significantly smaller than that of the S10 Plus with dual front cameras. Brands have come up with innovative ways to get rid of the notch. There's a slider feature for some phones, which can be done manually or automatically, and some opted for the punch hole design like Samsung, and this seems to be the going trend for 2019. I honestly don't know how to feel about it because notches these days are getting smaller like the Halo notch of Vivo or the water drop notch of Oppo, but still, I must say that I love the intention behind it. However, there's more to these phones than their notchless designs. The S10 series has really thin bezels, especially for the S10 and the S10 Plus. The S10e has a 5.8-inch screen, the S10 has a bigger one at 6.1 inches, and the S10 Plus has the biggest of the three at 6.4 inches. Now, if you want more screen real estate, you have the option of hiding the navigation bar so the buttons don't get in the way. Instead, you get three lines at the bottom which you can swipe up, and it pretty much works the same way. They have a dynamic AMOLED screen, and the picture quality is excellent. And because it has 800 nits of screen brightness, instead of the usual 700 nits in previous flagships, using it even under direct sunlight won't be a problem. We've heard rumors of the possibility of the S10 having a gradient design, but nope, they're not true. Our unit came in the prism black color variant, although it will also come in prism white, prism green, and ceramic black. Take note that the color availability varies depending on the particular S10 model that you're getting. Now, while other brands are going for colorful gradients, Samsung is keeping their classic look and I must say, they do it pretty well. The S10 Plus we have is simple yet very elegant. The top two models feel very similar with the curved design, while the S10e feels a lot like the S8 because of its smaller size. Although Samsung kept certain things classic, they did make a few changes. At the back of the device, you will notice that the cameras are arranged differently. It is now horizontal versus the vertical orientation on the S9. You'll also notice that there is no fingerprint scanner because Samsung used an in-display one for two of these devices except for the S10e that has a side-mounted scanner instead. The in-display ones are better than what most smartphones use because it is an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, so it's faster, more secure, and more accurate. Personally, I'm not a big fan of in-display scanners because it can't read my prints properly, probably because of all the hand cream I use. That is not a problem with this device. I'm really impressed by its speed and accuracy. Of course, you also have the option of using face detection, password, or PIN to unlock the phone. Now let's talk about the shooters. I'm sure that a lot of you guys really consider this feature before buying a smartphone. The S10 Plus has five cameras, the S10 has four, and the S10e has three. The top two variants have three rear cameras. The main one is a 12 megapixels with dual aperture, dual pixel, and optical image stabilization. The second module is the telephoto lens, which is at 12 megapixels with OIS and autofocus. The third one is a 16 megapixel wide angle camera. 
Selfie lovers will also enjoy the front cameras. The S10 Plus has a 10 megapixel main shooter with an 8 megapixel depth sensor. Now, if you use the timer for taking selfies, you will notice that the punch hole lights up, serving as your timer, although it also shows a countdown on your screen. The whole lighting thing isn't really necessary, but heck, it's cool. And you can also shoot videos in 4K, not just with the rear cameras, but with the front one as well. Here are some of our initial shots, although you can expect a lot more in the coming days as we take the phone around San Francisco to test it out. The Samsung Galaxy S10 runs on an Exynos 9820 for global units, including those that will be sold in the Philippines. Its 8 nanometer mobile chipset promises a fast and seamless experience with lower battery consumption. In our limited time with the device, it seems to deliver, but we've yet to fully test it out, so do check back on us in the coming days. Let's talk RAM and storage. All models except for the top variant has 128GB of storage, although the RAM varies with the S10e having 6GB and the S10 having 8GB. But the top variant has 12GB of RAM and 1TB of storage that's still expandable. That is huge. You may never have to delete files from your phone ever again. With all the new technology on the S10, Samsung did keep an oldie but goodie, the 3.5mm jack. I'm sure audiophiles are happy to know about this. As for the battery, the S10e has 3,100 mAh, the S10 has 3,400 mAh, and the S10 Plus has 4,100 mAh. Of course, it uses a USB Type-C for fast charging, which is expected of most phones in this caliber. It supports wireless charging and can also be used as a wireless charger, not just for smartphones, but also for wearables like the Galaxy Watch. And while we usually don't talk a lot about accessories, I just have to mention this because it's so cute. You can now buy an LED case for the S10 and the S10 Plus and choose a design according to your mood, like maybe a heart or a dog or a bird, just to name a few. And if you're a Marvel fan, there are also cases featuring your favorite hero. As of making this video, there's no official pricing yet for the Samsung Galaxy S10 series, but basing it off their previous flagships, we know that it won't come cheap. It's a good thing that they now have the S10e, which should be more affordable than the S10 and the S10 Plus. When they do announce the pricing of the phone and it's within your budget, you should definitely look into it. It's a great package. The S10 series will be available for pre-order from Feb 22 to March 3 and they have compelling offers. I mean, you can take home a TV for buying a phone. We will link our article down below and it has all the details. And that's it for this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell. For the latest tech news and gadget reviews from the Philippines, head to unbox.ph and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. This is Leia. Bye!